Businesses in San Francisco are abandoning the city. The latest Park Hotel and Resorts, which stopped making payments on a $725 million loan linked to two prominent hotels in the area. But our next guest is hanging on. He wrote an op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle earlier this week titled, Why I Couldn't Quit San Francisco and You Shouldn't Either. Let's bring in Alex Bastian, the president and CEO of the Hotel Council of San Francisco. Alex, great to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me today. I, I understand your position, especially considering where you work, Alex, um, but do you feel like you're just sort of shouting from the mountaintops? Because we're seeing businesses cite crime, um, it's, it's unsafe working conditions for, for their staff, and then all, you know, there's also the problem with office properties being vacant, which adds to this sort of problem. Thank you so much for bringing that uh, to your viewers' attention. You know, now more than ever, I do believe that San Francisco is a great investment still. And let me tell you why. For the first time in a long time, we are seeing consensus in our city around the issues involving public safety and tax reform. And that is something that the city is addressing head on uh, at this time. We saw a massive investment in public safety with the mayor's uh, budget request. And we are seeing discussions around really restructuring taxes so that businesses can thrive here, so that bureaucratic red tape can be cut. And that's something as a native San Franciscan that I have not seen before. So what you see before you around crime, uh, those images that many people see uh, on TV are part of the story. It's the other part of the story, which gives me some optimism. Make the case, though, why businesses should take the gamble now and not wait to see these things, not wait to see that, that consensus that is building in the city to address all of these problems, not wait to see that actual, actually bear fruit. Well, I'll say a couple of things. The first thing is, historically, San Francisco has always been a sure bet. I've lived through an earthquake. I've lived through two tech bubbles here, and people always counted us out every time. We always come back better and we always come back stronger if we work together and if we employ common sense reforms. That's what we're seeing right now. As far as the investments, we need to make short-term, medium-term, and long-term investments. On the short-term, public safety and clean streets are so important. And we're seeing the city really kind of meeting that with the new budget. On the medium-term, tax reform is going to be so important cutting bureaucratic red tape so that it's easier for businesses to, to really do things here, open businesses. That is going to be so important. And we're discussing that currently. And it's so important for business to have a seat at the table in those conversations. And in the long term, what we're really going to need is infrastructure investments. For example, we have the best airport in the world. In my opinion, definitely the best in the country. And what we need to do is find ways to invest in our airport to really encourage more airlift uh, to our great city. You know, this city is a piece of gold, and it's been in the mud the last couple of years, partially due to the pandemic, partially our own doing, and partially the national mudslinging that we're seeing. But if we clean that piece of gold, if we keep it safe, if we hold it up in the light, it's going to shine bright on the world stage again. And that's what we're doing as we speak. Um, Park Hotels, they're walking away. You're part of the hotel council. I mean, what, what is the case that you make to your other member hotels to s why they should stick in the city? I mean, it seems like businesses are growing weary of San Francisco. I mean, I, I don't know if there are many conventions that are going to be held in San Francisco anytime soon. Well, actually, that is incorrect. We do have conventions, uh, not quite uh, at the level we did in 2019. But the momentum is headed in the positive direction. I think it's important to note that San Francisco historically was a top three destination for over a decade before the pandemic, with occupancy rates fluctuating around 80%. During the height of the pandemic, occupancy rates dropped to 8%. And when I came up here to visit at the beginning of last year, uh, occupancy rates were around 25 to 27%. You know, I had no interest in coming back to the city. I loved my life in LA. I felt at home there, that was home for me. However, what I saw was heartbreaking and I felt obligated to take on this job because I believe San Francisco is a good investment. That's why I came back. And since then, what we've seen is occupancy rates around 60%. Now that's still a far cry away from 80%. That's still a far cry away from where we were in 2019. But we're headed in the right direction. 
Alex, thank you so much for uh, sharing San Francisco's story with us tonight. We appreciate it. Alex Bastian of the Hotel Council of San Francisco. Um, on we, we, we do hear a lot of the headlines of businesses pulling out because the crime is just too difficult to deal with on a daily basis in terms of people going in and just grabbing merchandise and not being able to do anything about it. Yeah, so it's interesting. You know, we talk in terms of trading and investing and stuff like that. If, if, if San Francisco was a stock, I think we'd buy it as a value stock because it's got a long history of being one of the most rich, diverse places in our country. It literally is the home to Silicon Valley. And you think of the innovation that's been created there yeah. over the last 50 or 60 years. And when you think about network effects, a lot of Silicon Valley folks like to think about that as they're investing in companies and, and how these companies can grow. San Francisco and Silicon Valley is that too. You know what I mean? So right now it feels really bad, but people felt that way about New York City and New York City's never been better. You know, people felt that way about some of these other cities that, you know, were, were beneficiaries from some of this um, exodus of some of these big places. But I think a lot of those people are kind of leaving. They're leaving Austin. They're leaving Miami. These are not as good of, like, like towns with network right. effects. So to me, I, I think San Francisco, a lot of tech folks that I know, a lot of investors have not left, and they're kind of doubling down the way they see it. Yeah, you know, Mike Coe is in the wings. He's been listening to this. He, uh, you know, is one of these guys who's moved away from big cities, move back. So, Mike, what, what are your thoughts uh, on this and, and San Francisco as a place to be? I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to recover, honestly. Let's, let's take a look. First of all, the retail situation is quite grim. We've got most of the big retailers down in that Market Street area that are closing. Uh, we can see where the prices of office spaces are trading. 350 California just went for about $220 a square foot. 550 California, which is a 350,000 square foot office building, that Wells Fargo bought in 2005 just went for about $120 a square foot. Okay, those are you know 70 to 80 percent declines in value. So you you want to see business return and you need to have retail return. I don't know why hotels are going to come back if you don't have other reasons to be in the city. If there's no shopping and there's no business, that's pretty tough. Maybe this hotel thing is good for the remaining hotels, though. Occupancy True. will go up from, I don't know, the denominator, but if three close down, that's right. the kind of thing that creates a bottom. Right.